Last week there was the 20th Communist Party Congress, the National Communist Party Congregation, which is every five years a major event where basically the strategy and the structure of the party is revised, is discussed, debated, the new leadership is decided and the strategy for the next five years and the long-term goals are uh, determined and, and, and made public. Now, the, the, the problem is that Western media really lack both capacity and capability to deal with such an event. Capability meaning they don't have the experts who know what was debated five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, so that they see the continuation in order to assess what were the changes. Uh, because the Communist Party doesn't release, you know, spoon feeding papers where they say okay this sentence we didn't like anymore because ABC so we changed it into that because of ABC that's something that the journalists need to do and Western journalists cannot do it because they don't know what was the sentence last time and which word has changed what could that mean um, so they lack the capability they also lack the capacity in terms of, of, of formats where they could really report on long documents because the Communist Party a congregation or Congress, what they publish is a 60 page document at the beginning, the report of the last five years with the vision for the future. And then at the end of the whole conference, another paper with the final report of the meeting and Chinese media there seven days just reporting that like 80 percent 90 percent it's it's more like when you have a u.s presidential election where two days the american media wouldn't report anything else here in china during that uh, congress they would report all kinds of details which delegation from which uh, province uh, was meeting with whom and what was said there so what's the special things for that province communist party office etc etc and, and have all these in-depth analysis and reports, which obviously in the West, um, journalists, even though they start to realize that these meetings are relevant, they still don't have formats where they could really go in depth and analyze. And then the reports come out with 60, 70 pages. And then you're supposed to really get out the gist, what is important in there in terms of change, what's important in, te in terms of consistency. That's something that our journalists simply aren't capable of doing. And that's why I feel we're not well informed in the West. However, what they did a lot, and I have to say very professionally, very successfully, is distract <laughs> to make sure that nobody knows what Xi Jinping thought is actually what's written in there, what these theories actually say, and instead discusses about, you know, evil China and, and, and um, ooh, there was a protest on a bridge in Beijing. Yeah, all right with misspellings even on the writing. That was a protest. I actually did a video about that one. And, uh, you know, even if it was somebody from Hong Kong or somebody from Beijing who did that in a lone wolf activity with no follow up. So what? There are, you know, thousands, tens of thousands protesting in Holland, in France, in, in Canada. You have protests all over the West. Why do you care so much about a single protester in Beijing? Then there was the second uh, protest, which may be linked. I wouldn't be surprised if it's if they know each other. It's kind of this Hong Kong method to do provocations, hope for a, a violent response and then point the finger and say, "Ooh, see the violent Chinese. So the second one was an attack on, on the Chinese consulate in England. Um, where they did offensive posters. I mean, it wasn't a message. It wasn't some like we want to change something or we have a specific concern about China. It was like F your mother and, you know, some, some insulting pictures that they put right at the gate of the consulate. And I think the Chinese consul, he just went up there, pulled down <laughs> the, the poster and, 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 and pulled it down, which, all right, you could say that's uh, vandalism. It's attacking somebody else's property if, if they applied for that protest and if it was allowed by the British authorities, then you could say that was a, an illegal attack on, on that poster, which, you know, should be followed the regular course of, of courts if they want to sue the consul for, for destroying their uh, expensive posters. That's their rights. However, that's not what they chose to do. They instead started beating and attacking consulate staff. 
uh, one was pulled on the floor and, and kicked towards his head. And um, I will link a video below from, by, by Nathan Rich. He did a very, very detailed video with like frame by frame analysis of, of the video. I'm not saying that's all that's to the story that he did, but he showed those parts that Western media did not show. So I think it's very important to be aware that those thugs really did violently attack people laying on the ground. So, so yeah, that was the second one that was reported very much. Now, what was the third one? Um, yeah, the uh, Hu Jintao rumor. I mean, uh, Hu Jintao was guided out of the room during the last uh, plenary session and everybody looks around very uncomfortably. You can see Xi Jinping, Li Keqiang, they look kind of uncomfortable because of that thing happening. And it was so much overinterpreted. First of all, Hu Jintao does not have any power anymore. Not just formally, like he's retired, he doesn't have a formal position anymore. Also, like unlike Deng Xiaoping, who after his retirement became even more important, Hu Jintao does not have that position. I mean, he's very respected as an elder statesman, as a leader, uh, but he doesn't wield any, any real power. Second of all, if you look at other videos, parts of of uh, this conference where you see Hu Jintao, he's really old. Like, I mean, he's nine, uh, 79 by age, but, but he looks really old. He's, he's looking into the distance with an unclear expression in his face. He seems to be lost at times. So, yeah, this is not a, a man who's plotting a secret opposition against Xi Jinping. This is a man who needs care and if that happened in a situation where it's not convenient, of course, everybody's embarrassed. Most of all, he himself is embarrassed, so he doesn't want to get up. He wants to be like, no, I can handle this. Look, I, 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 I try to, to be strong. I don't want to give some, some, you know, sense of ganga in Chinese like this. I feel embarrassed, so I don't want to be the old man who needs to be carried out. But then Xi Jinping kind of knows, well, this is an old man, so he does need his care, so, so let's get him out. He came back in afterwards. And um, he was also, whenever he came in, he was accompanied by somebody who helps him walk, helps him find the right place, because that's what you do with a person who's in that uh, stage of, of development. And so I think it was massively overinterpreted and I think to some extent, maybe it's even overinterpreted because Western media know that this is how you should handle a very old man who at times doesn't know where he is and somehow doesn't find the way off a stage or to the right seat where he should sit down. And I think you've all guessed by now who I'm talking about. Of course, in the US, there's a certain a person who's now called president, who everybody knows he's not capable of leading the country because he doesn't really know where he is anymore. And unlike the US, in China it's possible, even at a formal event, even when everybody cares about decorum, etc., to still take into account the human nature of people getting old. I think that's what it was and I don't think there was much more to it. So yeah, that, that, those were like three, I call them distractions, just topics that are easy to show in video, they're easy to talk about. So that's what the media focused on in the West because you know it can point the finger, it can put it black and white, uh, the evil Chinese, etc. It, it helps to have an easy message, have nice pictures to it. Whereas a report, 60 pages written in Chinese or a translation in English, in a very difficult language where a lot of codes are used in the sense, not codes as secret codes, but in the sense of a formalized scientific language where words have a very defined specific meaning. And if you don't get the specific meaning, you will misunderstand sentences because they're not written in order for, for laymen to just grasp the meaning. They're intended to have a very, very unified understanding that is not contestable that is very clear what is meant to be expressed. So it's a scientific text, it's a long scientific text. Uh, with that, I will do a separate video about the content of, of the strategy, what changed, what hasn't changed. Just a few words right now. 
I think, first of all, the whole <coughs> a report of the 20th CPC Congress is overall very much portraying stability. It shows that China is on the right course. It doesn't see the need to change drastically anything. There are tweaks and, and, and adjustments here and there, but it's not a revolutionary. There's no major change. There's no major shift, which I think in itself <laughs> is in a way revolutionary or against the trend. We live in a world that is so rapidly changing. The West is crumbling. The Western system are destroyed by Western forces who find them not convenient anymore. You know, they still talk about international rules, but they don't really want the international law anymore. The United Nations organizations like WHO, like, like others, are attacked by the US who actually originally built those organizations as a driving force. So really the West is dismantling its own institutions. And, and then of course, Russia and Western uh, war that's going on in Ukraine and, and you know, Middle East, big changes, Africa, big changes, et cetera, et cetera. China is like oozing this sense of stability. We're still here, we're going strong and we remain on course. Um, one change that I did notice, I didn't see it reported to be honest, but I think it's an important change, is the word Quanmian uh, Kaifang, meaning um, uh, full opening up. So Quanmian meaning full, Kaifang mean, meaning open, that has disappeared. And that was uh, one of Xi Jinping's, when he came to power in 2012, uh, his, his main strategic push was all right, we have done reform and opening, but we haven't completed it. We now have to completely open up and completely reform. And um, now it doesn't say we don't open further anymore. No, that's not what it says. It says um, on a high level, high quality opening up, deepen the reform. And I think the Chuanmian Gai Ge is still there. So complete reform is still there, but the, the opening up is now kind of slightly taken down a notch to high quality opening up. And I think that just reflects the developments in the last five years. There's the economic war that Trump started against China. There's the economic war of the West against Russia, which uses the economic power of the West to achieve the political goal of punishing Russia for starting an illegal war. And then there's the absolutely illegal confiscation of, of Russian money, not just government money, but also of Russian individuals for the crime of being Russians. So all these things that point to a situation where international trust is not a given anymore, where China realizes that they cannot just rely on, on the West sticking to contracts or, or keeping their word. And in such a situation, obviously, you don't want to be too much integrated into the global economy. You want to focus on, on your kind of being able to have it all within your own country. Not necessarily protectionism. Again, China will continue to open up further industries, will continue to be integrated in supply chains. But it, it just tries to have like this, this ability to be self-sufficient if necessary. And I think that's one of the changes that I saw in this uh, report that I noticed. Um, and other things that I definitely will do a separate video is, again, the Communist Party has the leadership over everything that's emphasized. That's not a change. That's a point of continuity. I think it's just one of those points that are frequently completely misinterpreted by Western analysts because they automatically think leadership of the Communist Party means as opposed to other political parties. So it's the sign of, of power grab or whatnot. Whereas I think in the Chinese context, what it really means is the Marxist ideology for the workers, for the farmers, serving the people, that's what the party stands for and that needs to be at the top. Not special interests, not any oligarchs, not any local, provincial or even lower city level kind of interests, uh, not the clan, because Chinese people, traditional family is very important, the extended family is something, it's not called clan, but something like a clan, like the extended family, it's very important. 
and every official in a leadership position in China does have their family and has the expectation from the family, like, you're my uncle, you're my brother, you're my this and that, you should help me out, right? And that's expected in Chinese culture. So in that case, you have to emphasize, yes, we want families to stick, stick together and, and help each other out, but the Communist Party is at the top and is leading, so you have to follow the party first and all your personal interests have to come second. So that's more a benign interpretation of this meaning. The party leads it all. I think it's more accurate in terms of how Chinese understand themselves. But again, this is going to be stuff for my next video. Thanks for watching. Please share, like and forward.